Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about Next.js and how the dynamic routing system works as well as how you can route from one page to another, get query parameters and all that good stuff within the Next.js recall system. And if you find value in this video, make sure you subscribe, leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you would like me to cover next. So as you can see here, I have a pretty basic Next.js app and I haven't really changed too much from the basic Next.js app that you get if you pull it straight the way the documentation says from NPX, but first of all, let's go over the file structure. The most important thing here is to note that the pages folder that comes with Next.js is a keyword folder. This is what tells Next.js how all the routing works and all the pages in your application will live inside of this folder. Now, note that I said pages and not necessarily components because you do want to separate the two and I'll talk more about that in just a bit. But first of all, you can notice that a file that comes default with it is the API file, which contains some server-side calls that if you wanted to make API calls with, uh, you could do, but that is for another video. But the most important two files that it comes with is app.js and index.js. Don't worry about user and about, I added that as examples, and we'll get to that in just a second. But app.js is essentially another keyword file, and what this does is it sort of renders when any other page will render. It's sort of like the big thing that overarchs any other page, sort of like a layout almost so to speak and you won't really be overriding this unless you are a using state management libraries that requires <clears throat> providers like the context uh, API provider or maybe for example Redux or if you're using like a um, material UI type of library uh, that requires you to have a theme and you can wrap your whole application in a theme or if you are making a general layout and you want for example a header in every single component or a footer in every single component this is where you would also put that but for now before we talk about that let's talk about the index.js index.js is a keyword file that wherever it is nested it will show as the default page for that path so the top level uh, you know page of your site is just in this pages folder so anytime someone just goes to your uh, site without any specific URL it will show that top level index.js page as you can whoops uh, as you can see right here and Within that page, you can put whatever you want. It's pretty much like the home page of your website. But let's say, for example, you wanted an about page. Well, if you want the about page to be on the top level of the site, and what I mean by that is you just want the URL to be slash about and nothing else, all you have to do is create an about.js file at the top level, so right under pages, and you can put whatever you want there. And then if I were to go to slash about, you can see that bam, there we go. Slash uh, about pretty much shows whatever is in the about page. Now, when you are coding like this, it's very important to note you don't want to put every single literal thing inside of your, you know, .js files inside of here. So, for example, if your about page had like, you know, maybe a bunch of components that included like different uh, cards for each founder of the website or each founder of the company and stuff like that, you would still want to use the React pattern of, you know, having a component for each card and stuff like that. And you don't want to put it into this pages folder because what Whatever you put into the pages folder will be publicly viewable as a page and not just as a component. So you want to create a components folder and make sure that you put stuff into there, um, you know, depending on whatever it is that you are working on. Um, and then you can always go ahead and import all of those components into your actual uh, pages. And a good structure I like to use is if, for example, I have a subfolder in my page, I'll also create a subfolder in my components folder for that page. So if I have a user section on my website, I I will create a users um, folder under my components and put all the components I need for my user pages within that folder itself. And also, you know, maybe a folder for common components that are shared across all different pages and, and so on and so forth. So let's talk about folders and what role they play. So a folder simply acts as another path part of that URL. So if I wanted to, for example, nest something into the user path, for example, if I wanted to go to slash user slash profile, well, I would create a user folder, which would then be able to nest files inside of it. So as we talked about before, if I create a user folder and I have an index.js in there, well, that index.js is going to show whenever the top level folder is shown. So for example, if I go to slash user, 
you will see that it is simply displaying the index.js file because that is the default uh, page that it will show for any subpath. And as you can see here, user, because it is a folder, is one of our subpaths. Now, if I name a file in here like profile and I go to slash profile, you will see that, oh, nothing is shown. And that is pretty much because I forgot to type slash user slash profile. And there you go. We get the file that corresponds to slash user slash profile. And that is pretty much all done with file names. And you can keep on nesting this over and over and over again, depending on how you want your URL structure to look. And a lot of the times if you're using Next.js, it's because you want server-side rendering because one of the big benefits is SEO and it is great for Google. So the URL structure you have matters a lot and this makes it a lot easier to think about how you want to do it. Let's talk about dynamic routing now because dynamic routing is sort of a huge extension in function about the functionality. So let's, for example, I want to have a user page, but I want the user URL to be user slash the user's ID. So I want it to look like user slash and maybe one, two, three, if it's the user ID one, two, three, or maybe it's user number 781, in which case the URL would look like that. Of course, we can't make 781 different folders to account for every single user, so we use something called a dynamic path. And the way you do a dynamic path is you simply create a file, and that file simply has square brackets um, around whatever you want the variable to be called in that path. So now if someone goes to slash user slash anything that is not listed here, it will match to this file right here which obviously means that it, um, you know, uh, you can use the value inside of there. So for example, let's say this is my ID file. If I were to go to slash one, two, three, it would show that we are on the ID page. Now, if you wanted to use the value from that, and let's say a lot of the times if you're doing this is because you want to fetch data from a backend, you would either have a get server side props or a get static props. And within that, you can just use a variable called query query gets passed in to every get server side props and get static props. And that will allow you to get the actual, whatever you name that variable to be from there. So if I were to console log that query, you can see here that it is simply one, two, three. Now that is for, uh, for you know, uh, URLs that have been specified in the file name. But let's say for example, you have a query string, something like, you know, maybe <clears throat> we have our regular URL, but we want to pass in a query string to show if admin, uh, you know, you should never do this, but let's say for example, if we want the admin view to be true and you want to be able to get this admin value out of there as well. And that's a query string. Well, that is also captured by this query object. So if I were to actually go to that URL, um, oh, and let's get rid of this. If I were to actually go to that URL and I think Next is being a bit weird and it's being a bit slow right now on my computer, but essentially that will also be contained uh, as part of that query object. So you would see another attribute in that object and I'll just quickly restart that. Oh, there we go. You'll see another attribute called admin, which will be true. Basically whatever you pass in there and you can pass as many things as you want. It's also worth noting if you were to, for example, have this type of structure and you overwrote one of the variables. So we called our folder uh, our file ID, if you were to also pass in a query string that was also called ID, the file name would overwrite it, uh, would overwrite the query string. So this ID equals true would not show up. One, two, three would show up instead because um, when the names clash, it will obviously take the file name um, over the query parameters. And that's pretty much it for the basics of dynamic routing in Next.js. And like I said, if you have any comments or any questions, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe for more React content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.